member of the United Bureau, Barangay officials, <coughs> department heads and their staff, partners from the uh, different national agencies, partners from the private sector, friends, ladies and gentlemen, my good and It was a privilege and a great pleasure serving you, the people of San Carlos City, with whom we have the social and moral contact to serve. From the very moment, you have fixed your seat of trust and confidence in our leadership in 2010. Kahang salamat sa inyong pagtuo o pagsali. Tungod ni ini ang mong ibuhat ng tanah. Aron ang mong mahata ka ninyo ang gusto o pinamaayong servisyo publiko. Pinasubay sa Master Development Plan na naglapit sa dalang gato sa kalambuhan sa akong siyad. As of the year 2012, we have gone a long way along the path of development and progress laid down in our Master Development Plan. A plan that many of us had the privilege of participating, participating in its inception and crafting, together with our previous and present leaders and officials in the private and public sectors of the city, some of whom are here today. The Master Development Plan provides the direction of our efforts puts meaning to our quest and provides a standard of measurement of our performance and accomplishments. Being a roadmap for the city's development and growth, upon which we anchor our continued social, economic, and environmental progress for the well-being of our people. Our accomplishments in 2012 are to be taken in context of our accomplishments in the previous two years of my term which address our vision of becoming an exemplary modern agro-industrial zone and a new town that will be distinct, memorable, economically viable, socially responsible, and in balance with the environment. And our mission to achieve food self-sufficiency and security, resource-based, diversified, and balanced agro-industrialism and ecotourism that is complemented with efficient and effective delivery of basic social economic services, dynamic political leadership, and strong public and private partnership for suitable and environmentally friendly development activities. We are pleased to report that with the collaboration and support of the Sagunian Council, led by no less than the Vice Mayor Edgardo Pizubini, we successfully implemented various continuing and new programs and projects in 2012 and made significant contributions to making our city more progressive and giving our constituents better and more responsive services. For better understanding of our, of our accomplishments, this report is categorized into economic development and food security, safety and disaster risk management and environment, health and social services, and financial management. On the area of economic development, our trust is more on the development of our rich agriculture, because San Carlos City is primarily an agricultural economy. When we first won, as 2010 Champion in Economic Development in the region, Search for Excellence or Excel Awards of VIIG Region 6, besting even the cities of Bacolod and Iluiro, many of our constituents needed their roles and questioned the award because we don't even have big companies in the city. Well, I am proud to report that we maintain the honor and we also are the 2011 Champion in Economic Development in the same Excel Awards in the region. <laughs> These awards validated our, our unwavering effort to promote our economy, not only in commerce and industry, but most especially in agriculture. We made great strides in agricultural research services and facilities, 
skills training and marketing assistance to farmers. And we hope that those who wonder why, the top, why we top the economic development category will look closely at our accomplishments and realize that we are indeed are in the right direction. That our accomplishments in economic development was not measured only in terms of investments, but also in how we develop our rich resources in agriculture. To boast our agricultural research and development programs, the Agriculture Center and Demonstration Area at Sitio Medina, Barangay Rizal, was established. This agricultural, technical, and research center with demonstration farms for actual testing and research has long been envisioned by the late former Mayor Roger de Bolgado, was carried out by the administration of former Mayor Paul Lachon, and so its full implementation in my time as city mayor of San Carlos City. Due to the abundant yield of our demonstration farms for, for our research in high yield varieties for organic vegetables, fruits, high body crops, and livestock products, we were encouraged to pass an ordinance last year authorizing the, city, the Office of the City Agriculture Risk to sell agriculture, livestock, and poultry products to interested buyers. And so far, our agri center products are selling very well. To effectively continue with the extension of our technical and market support for integrated farming systems, the city allocated 1.7 million for this program in 2012 to support our continuing rice seeds production, farmers field school, which graduated 252 farmers in 2012, varietal trial for rice with the Philippine Research Rice Research Institute Negros Station soil sampling and soil series identification, organic agriculture and technical assistance to non-farmers, field school members to further enhance the skills of our farmers to increase rice production. The city government's strong effort to rice farming is validated by the national award received by our senior agriculturist, Marianeta Natosa as one of the country's outstanding agricultural extension workers during the first Agri Pinoy Rice Achievers Award or Paranal sa mga Bosing sa Palaya in 2012. In 2012, organic agriculture made a significant leap in the city's farming system with the creation of the 17-member City Technical Committee on Organic Agriculture to formulate the city's organic agriculture plan and oversee its implementation. A series of trainings have been conducted in December to capacitate committee members and targeted farmers regarding effective organic farming. In view of our continued vigilance against livestock diseases, our city agriculture office received the award Best Implementer of Veterinary Quarantine Activities in Negros Occidental during the Negros first Livestock Awards 2012 last June. Some 40,000 40, 40, various animals like chickens, goats, cows, and dogs received free vaccination, the warning, and treatment under the Barangay Clinic Program held in different paradise last year. Under our continuing technical support services to upland farmers on livestock and high value crops development, we actively pursue artificial insemination to cows and cattle, belonging to 404 farmers, dispersed 29 cows and 48 cattle to 77 farmers, and dispersed 458 goats, female goats, and 23 male goats to 11 barangay farms of the city last year. City veterinarian Jeff Riolab was also awarded Best Implementer for the Goat Breeding Project in the same Negros First Livestock Awards in 2012. <laughs> Under our one development program, we distributed for free 3,435 mango seedlings to 156 farmers. And any San Carlos City resident who wishes to plant mangoes can get seedlings from our agri center for free. We also successfully propagated two trees at the Army Center, like guava apples, jackfruit, 
Guyardo, Rambotano, Danzones, Mangustin, Pumero, and Uyan under our Orchard Production Program, also available for you at our Army Center. On the other hand, more than 2.5 million pesos was appropriated for the construction, repair, and improvement of various agricultural buildings in 2012. This includes the completion of the Bantai Banda building, budgeted at 2.2 million, which we inaugurated last December 20, 2012. Our agriculture office has also acquired a new tractor under the Farm Tractor Assistance Program of the Department of Agriculture for the improved productivity and income of local corn farmers through its agri corn program, Farm Mechanization, wherein DA showed their 50% of, and the city counterparted the 50% of the 2.4 million peso budget for the purchase of one tractor with internet. Our initiatives in agricultural law and development, including our present and development programs for fisheries and aquatic resources, earned for our city various awards in the Pasidungo sa Panguma Card Pamisda 2012 during the 19th Panarag Celebros Festival. Outstanding Bantay Daga Task Force, third place, outstanding LGU performance for staple food sufficiency with a cash price of 500,000. We also have 20 scholars at the San Carlos Technical School who started their training for automotive, electronics, and welding last December. A total of 66 skilled workers and test staff officers received starter kits or tools from the Department of Labor and Employment to start their own livelihood using their skill in carpentry, welding, automotive, and electronics. And the city government allocated the funds for the values formation seminar before they started their business ventures. We have been implementing also programs that provide employment opportunities even for persons with disabilities and students from Peso, so that our Public Employment Office has received various awards, like Top Performing Peso 2012 for Poland City Category, Top Performing Peso Manager 2012 for Poland City Category, awarded by Lowy Region 6, that complemented the same performance of Top Performing Peso 2011 and the top performing peso manager in 2012. However, no matter how hard the local government unit addresses its employment problems, economic progress will always attract more people to the urban center for greener pasture, thus creating a persistent unemployment problem. And mostly, those coming into the city are from the rural areas seeking better lives. This phenomenon has already been addressed by our city the government under our master development plan, where three outland barangays, the barangays of Prosperidad, Quezon, and Magulbon, are identified as rural growth centers to bring economic, social economic progress to the countryside, and barangays Bulwangan and Guadalupe are designated as expansion settlements. Knowing that the success of the growth centers and the associated agriculture priority programs depend on the improvement of the strategic rural road network, rural access roads will continue to be upgraded under the city's ongoing road development program, with priority being given to linkages to the rural growth centers. The program includes upgrading and all existing farm to market roads and the opening of new roads, like in Barangay Punao, of the 7.6 kilometers primary road. 2.2 kilometers are already completed, leaving 5.4 kilometers to be completed. In Barangay Palambas, of the 3.6 kilometers primary road, 2.4 kilometers are already completed, leaving 1.2 kilometers to be completed. Barangay Nataban, of its 3.6 kilometers primary road, 3.6 kilometers are either completed or being completed for 100% budgeted. Barangay Quezon, of its 2.7 kilometers primary road, two kilometers are already completed, leaving 0.7 kilometers to be completed. 
Barangay Kukun, of the 11.6 kilometers primary road, 5.1 kilometers are already completed, leaving 6.5 kilometers to be completed. And in Barangay Kukun, of its 3 kilometers primary road, 3 kilometers are either completed or being completed, or 100% budgeted. This brings a total of 18.3 kilometers of primary road already completed by my administration. And we are working on the 100% completing of the remaining, remaining level portion of these barangay primary roads. In addition, two foot bridges at Barangay Palapas were completed by this administration. One at the Desma Heights last 2011 and one at the Senda Santa Ana in 2012. In Sipangway Island, the 1.6 kilometer road concreting was undertaken during my term to complete the total 13.83 kilometers of concrete surface road network circulating the island of Sipangway. In the urban area, we have the continuing construction of the 1.6 kilometer boulevard under our circumferential road one program and the development of a port access road which is a priority to serve the port expansion area in the interest of highway safety and reduce traffic congestion. Continuous linkage with DPWAs and the improvement of the road surface treatment has been undertaken very closely. Our urban roads have been completed in 2012 include access roads at the Regions Relocation Center, including drainage installation in Barangay 3. The road from Julio de Desma National High School Circumferential Road 1 to Circumferential Road 2 in Barangay Palampas. Lot number 9 with curb and gutter and sidewalk and completion of road from the Barangay Rizal Barangay Center. Phase 4 at Fatima Village in Barangay Rizal. Meanwhile, the construction of the 1 kilometer Circumferential Road 2 traversing the Translink Highway going to Circumferential Road 1 passing the site of the new city hospital has already started. To most newcomers of Barangay Prosperidad, we constructed a new public market for Barangay Prosperidad, including an artisan well at a cost of 4.8 million pesos. We also undertook a continuing education program for our rural barangays that resulted to an additional 1,486 households as of 2010 to the end of 2012, now enjoying the benefits of light and electric power. Situs that are already in electrical connections are Situs Lower Suwa, Malabag, Kapangahan, Magakay, Napublan, Tinurungan, Lower and Upper Kansakam, Kansayan, Apuyo, and Gio, and Puro Sampagita and Ilangilan in Barangay Quezon, Upper Bulay in Barangay Prosperidad, Manga, Kabunao, and Batikulan of Barangay Palampas, Natuyay and Giliranan of Barangay Kulkul, Mahayalay of Barangay Punao, Upper Bulog, La Mesa, Tuburan, Malahay of Barangay Buluangan, Udarak and Manindog of Barangay Tumulbor, Tapon and Galing, Gawad Galinga Village of Barangay Kodalupe. All these electrification projects were made possible through the joint undertaking of the city government, the office of the congressman used the Desma report, and the Sitio electrification program of President Vidigno Tornoy Aquino III. Another basic commodity that answers both economic and social development needs is water. Several projects were implemented since I sat down in office. Within this time, the city has implemented three water exploration projects to, for possible sources of water and subsequently implemented seven spring development projects. Within this period also, we widened the, co we widened the coverage of our level three water services with the implementation of our waste of, of our water line expansion project in Barangay Lomulbon. Situ Kapagtasan, Situ Napaturan, level three water system Water line installation in Rita Homes and St. John's Subdivision and the extension of level service to Barangay Buluangan. 
Forwarding to these developments is the city's continuing effort to provide safe and portable water by annually providing appropriations for disinfection activities which the City Water Works Department regularly conducts in all our public stations and water sources and constant rehabilitation and repairs of existing water facilities and equipment. But the highlight accomplishment of this administration in the area of water provision is the completion of the mass awaited Sipawai water supply project, benefiting the residents of Barangay San Juan and Ermita. Surely the advent of water in the area is a blessing as it will bring about a great change in the lives of the people in these barangays by opening economic opportunities, considering that the island of Spoxipawa has a great potential for tourism. Galit ni atong Hunyo also last year, atong itaguran ang bagong nahuman na 20.7 meter long tourism shed dito sa project San Juan in Dabda. Nga gigasuhan na ito ng 850,000 kung ang barangay San Juan ay yung tampo of 50 meter. We made history last in our entry when the first drop of water flowed out of the Sipawai water system. It was formally inaugurated last January 5, and my feelings towards the realization of this long time dream as one of euphoria, because this was our love project for the people of Sipawai. And we have realized this dream after so many years and so many ideas. Proposals and plans that were, ma that were not materialized because either they were not feasible or were just too expensive. The cost of the first phase of this level of basic power in the water system is 18.3 million pesos. With 13.3 million pesos coming from the city coffers and the 5 million from the provincial funds. Water is brought to Sipawa via high density polyethylene transmission lines stretching 2,300 meters across Daniel Street from the waterfront of Barangay 6 to the landing point at Barangay San Juan. And we are very grateful to Mrs. Debbie Nick Rigor Nichols, daughter of the late Barangay of San Juan, Kuno Barangay Isaiah Segor, who donated the land at Barangay San Juan for this project. Sipawai residents no, no longer have to pay 10 pesos per container of water first from the population as the selling price of water under this project is only 1 peso per container. <laughs> Phase 2 is already in the drawing board for water distribution to each and every household. Fortunately, we have foreseen the additional water requirement for this Sipawai water system. And this was been addressed by the completion of the 8.1 million Aglamos Spring Development Project, which boasted the city's water supply capability by 700 gallons per minute, thereby augmenting the 1,500 gallons per minute of water supplied by our existing seven water sources. However, what we have accomplished in economic development could be lost if we are not prepared for natural and man-made disasters and calamities. Sa unang panahon, sa iyong Renato Ingol, nga maayo pa ang nangigot ka sa bagyo, kaya masalpa pa ang ato ang mga butan. Di na ginitinood, kaya karoon ng mga panahon, ang bagyo makapakha o usaka lugar sa mapa. Ang naitabo ka puso ng alino, sa kibulga ng lobi, na libertad negros, Occident Oriental, ni atong Febrero 2012, nga nakaingon sa mass evacuation sa atong mga nagkuyo sa atong siyad tungkol sa tsunami alert. Nga kapasalamatong kita na walang matimuot, na kaaghap ka nato pag-ayo sa paghimundayon o mga lakang, karon kita kanunay na preparado o blayo sa mga kadaos nga magigang sa mga mahitabong katalaman. To assure the safety of our people in times of disasters and calamities, our Sanguniang Promotor approved the release of funds for pre-disaster needs 
as identified by the City Disaster Risk Reduction Management Office and approved by the City Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council, such as the construction of the Disaster Operations Center in the amount of 11 million pesos, which construction will commence early this year. Barangay 1 and Barangay 2 now evacuation area improvement. Purchase of various rescue and evacuation equipment in the total amount of more than 2 million. And transportation equipment for 11 million, including one pay loader and 14 cubic meter dump truck. The pay loader and dump truck were already delivered last January 7. Aside from improving our hardware capability through acquisition, acquisition of needed equipment and facilities, we are also continuously improving the skills of our CDRMO staff, rescue groups, and related persons to effectively and efficiently respond to said eventualities. Likewise, to develop awareness of the proper response during calamities, the CDRMO staff are conducting IEC activities on disaster preparedness in schools and in barangays of the city. We have been evaluated by the group of DILC evaluators for the seal of disaster preparedness. First level, and I please report that we scored 4.92 points against the highest rating of 5. <laughs> Our disaster preparedness was put to test last Typhoon Pablo. It was expected to hit San Carlos City on midnight of December 4. And as a precautionary measure, we evacuated 232 families, numbering 1,041 individuals from flood prone areas in Barangay 1, Barangay 5, Barangay 6, Punao, and Palampas, to various evacuation centers in the city and provided them with relief goods and food. We also provided food and water to residents of the island of Sipawai during that eventuality. We are just fortunate that the devastating typhoon reared its course and spared us. However, we provided financial assistance to typhoon public victims in Mindanao in the amount of 100,000 pesos through the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council and another 100,000 to the Philippine Red Cross for their relief operations in Mindanao. It was just unfortunate that at this early in 2013, fire broke out in one of our heavily populated areas in the interior in Trina in Agam Streets last July 12. That bore down 45 houses, rendering 249 persons homeless. Assistance was promptly extended by our CSW staff, headed by Madam Cynthia Mirande, to the fire victims who were evacuated to the newly completed School of the Future. Financial assistance of 10,000 each or were given to the 45 homeowners, while the 24 sharers and 11 renters received 3,000 per family. A total of 555,000 pesos from the city coffers was distributed last Friday, January 18. Under formal circumstances, the present administration implemented disaster mitigating projects last year, like the installation of curb, gutter, and sidewalk, and installation of RC pipes along the Oxine Parola and Boulevard Roads at the budget of 2.6 million. Drainage system at Barangay 6 relocation site, phase 1, at 3.2 million. Rehabilitation of riverbank protection at Sitio Capulan proper, Barangay Guadalupe, at 1.7 million, and rehabilitation of the Armaona overflow in Barangay Tataban at 790,000. The city constructed seven covered courts in seven barangays of the city, five of which have been completed, such as Barangay Bagumbon, Barangay 1, Barangay 6, Barangay 3, and Barangay Rizal, while those of Barangay Punao and Barangay Guadalupe are still under construction. These buildings, by the way, will likewise serve as evacuation centers when the need arises. There is also an ongoing construction of the Barangay Center at Barangay 4 that will house the Barangay Hall, daycare center, 
Community Health Center, and the Cover Gym. This Barangay Center will rise from the vacant and old cemetery site, which is now undergoing a total facelift. San Carlos City remained relatively peaceful in 2012 due to the diligence of our San Carlos City Police Station, which was awarded second most citizen friendly police station regional level in 2012. In support of its peacekeeping programs, the city government provided a local PNP with 10 handheld radios, one base radio, four ceiling fans, a counter, two Honda motorcycles, additional firearms and ammunition, various SWAT equipment. We turned all these supplies and equipment last Monday, January 21. Our local police relentlessly pursued its campaign against illegal drugs, loose firearms, illegal gambling, and illegal fishing, and confiscated 474 sacks of illegally transported charcoal. It also implemented its Pantai Dalan operation, its road safety operation through checkpoints, regular patrol on highways, monitoring of gate tracks for filterage that should cause traffic accidents, and organized a group of drivers to report any road hazards. With regards to traffic management, we're going ahead of a potential problem in traffic in case of increased usage in response to the city's growth. We have created the San Carlos City Traffic Management Authority and its component unit under our ordinance passed by the Simonia Palo last year. This body will take charge of the traffic management program, including the monitoring of roads, streets, sidewalks, and bridges to ensure these are in good condition. Integrated in our safety program is also a safe and healthy environment which was granted last year with the passage of the Environment Code of San Carlos City that encompasses all aspects of a clean and green environment, like clean air, clean surroundings, clean water, protected forests, seas and rivers, and such existing programs as environmental and ecological security program, the Northern Negros Forest Reserve Reforestation Program, the Mount Carnaval National Park Program, the annual tree planting every July 4, the Integrated Barrow River Watershed Development Program, Solid Waste Management Program, Mangrove Reforestation, Climate Change Mitigation Program, and, up, and other ongoing and future government programs and projects of the city government for the well-being of the public. If you find the green cover along the roadsides pleasing to you, while traveling to Pacola. Along the San Carlos side of the Airport Tourism Highway, it is because our city government planted trees along these routes under our various reforestation programs and our regular annual tree planting program every two and four. Traveling to our mountain paradise also elicits the same feelings because the green landscape as a result of our regular program of planting and maintenance of forest and endemic tree seedlings and fruit trees along roadsides, river banks, and in government lands in different barangays of the city, including thousands of Malungay seedlings at Sitio Benita Hills in Barangay Rizal. Our dedication to our obligation to reforest our city is best demonstrated in our commitment to the Barrio River Watershed Development Project, particularly in the project of the World Bank that contracted us to rainforestation project of 50 hectares and agroforestry project of 122 hectares in Barangay Prosperidad, but funded by World Bank, 7.1 million pesos, and by the city at 3 million pesos as counterpart fund. San Carlos City is one of the eight LGUs in Negros Occidental involved in the Barrio River project of the World Bank. But only our city is the only city that received a commendation for our good performance by completing the assigned activities in just one year and a half instead of three, with 95% of our 
Because of this, the World Bank poured in another 8.7 million without any more counterpart from the city. This, this is for an additional 120 hectares agroforestry and 20 hectares land forestation and for life year project for members of the Akutunoy, Mayupo, Mayana, and Agike, Bago Watershed Integrated Farmers Association in Barangay Prosperidad in the amount of 4 million pesos, included in the 8.7 million additional grant from World Bank. Our reforestation programs are not confined only to our mountain barangays, the North Negros Forest Reserve, the Bago River Watershed, and the Mount Carmel National Park. From the mountains to the sea is the coverage of our reforestation program. Year after year, we maintain the mangrove cover of our city's coastline and have been conducting barge protection and enhancement programs for our marine resources. As testaments of our achievements in coastal and aquatic resources programs, our Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Management Council was awarded second place in 2010 and champion in 2011 in the search for model farm sea in the province, while Armantai Daga was the most outstanding community-based enforcement group during the 2012 Negros First Environmental Awards last June. <laughs> Aside from this, other environmental awards were received by the city for the, for the last three years and recognition of our effort in ecological solid waste management, such as Plan of Excellence from the German International Cooperation Agency, GIC AHT, Hall of Fame as Outstanding NPTU in Environmental Management Provincial Environment Week 2012, Champion in the Local Chief Executive Category, Provincial Search for Environmental and Natural Resources Management Champion 2012, Champion in Security and Consult Category, Provincial Search for Environmental and Natural Resources Management Champion 2012. Best Barangay Captain for Barangay Captain Helen Newman for Barangay Bulbana, Provincial Environment Week 2012. Champion, Model Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Management Council 2011, Regional Champion in Environmental Governments, Excel Awards 2011. Presidential Liquid Bayan Award for our Solid Waste Management Office staff. 2010 Hall of Fame Award as Solid Waste Management Board. 2010 Best Solid Waste Management Board. 2010 Champion in the Search for Most Outstanding NGU on Environmental Management. 2010 Excellence in Environmental Management in Excel Awards. Champion in Zero Basura Olympics, Philippine Carbology Mount. Marathon, highly organized and component city category in the nationwide search for the modern city power community. <laughs> After our great achievement in ecological solid waste management, with the establishment of the ecological center and sanitary landfill, we are now bringing our solid waste management program to the next level. Through our improvement of the wastewater treatment facility at the Echo Center, completion of the wastewater treatment facility at the city slaughterhouse house and the new city health, city health office and completion of the water harvester at public, terminal, public transport terminal. We will also have a wastewater treatment facility at our still under construction new city hospital. In connection with our major plan this year to establish the centralized sub-phase treatment plan we have already sought the assistance of a Dutch expert in what ways water management, Dr. Eric Winkle. The design of the plant has already been made, and the next step will be to purchase a suction pump and construct a water treatment facility for that page. Actions have been taken by the city government regarding our problem of foul order from ethanol plant to San Carlos Bioenergy. And during the committee meeting called by the SP Committee on Environmental Protection and Natural Resources last December 11, San Carlos Bioenergy Spain, there is a service steps taken by the company to solve the problem and promise that there will be no more obnoxious smell by the end of this month or next week. <laughs> Thank you.
Freedom in the Mexico Department, I would like to inform you that major steps have already been taken for the creation this year of the City Environment Management Office, or SEMO, a department where all programs, activities, and concerns relative to environmental protection and enhancement will be centralized. If we have exerted so much effort for a clean environment to ensure the health of our constituents, much has also been achieved in protecting the health of the San Carlos City residents through our health and hospital services last year. Now, now all of all this are the implementation of a new approach for cardiovascular diseases and diabetes with post-stroke clients orientation and diabetes clients orientation while free medicines for hypertension and stroke were also provided to the patients. Our psychiatric program with recorded 87 patients showed high therapeutic effects as reported by their families. With, with continued treatment at the city health office, most of these mental patients are now in a state of mental restoration. When we have a rapid treatment program at the city health office, our city agriculture office is likewise conducting an ongoing vaccination program of dogs against studies. The city health office reported only three suspected cases of rabies last year, which were successfully treated, and the city agriculture vaccinated a total of 9,470 dogs. This notwithstanding, we still continue with our active campaign against rabies. And we are pleased to know that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is donating rabies vaccine for a period of five years from 2010 to be made widely available free of charge. <laughs> Our 2011 record of zero maternal mortality was maintained in 2012 through a continuous program of maternal care by our city health office. We continue to give pregnant mothers complete supplementation and immunization at their respective Paranai health centers during pre- and post-natal cycles. The importance of breastfeeding is also a continuing campaign, not only of our city health office, but also of the city hospital. Our city hospital received a mother-baby-friendly hospital certificate of commitment. This also served as an implementation of authorizing San Carlos City Hospital to be a training provider to other hospitals for exclusive breastfeeding implementation. The City Hospital is also an awardee in 2011 for reaching about 90% of newborn screening. In 2012, in 2012 the City Hospital exceeded the 2011 record and achieved more than 100% of newborn screening conducted that covered not only local residents but also walking patients from other localities. NBS is very important to newly born babies as this technology can identify certain diseases, especially congenital ones, which contest mortality rates among newborn infants. Starting this year, Children born at the city hospital will get another specialized service, which is newborn hearing screening, with the acquisition of a newborn hearing test machine called Autometrics for early detection of hearing defects among newborn infants. This makes us the first among local government hospitals in Northern Negros to have such a machine. In addition to newborn screening, this hearing test will be part of the city's ha city hospital delivery package service costing 1750 Last year, we also added three medical doctors to our city hospital, namely Dr. Christine Oreta, Medical Specialist 2 for Pediatrics, Dr. Maria Danisa Patrimonio, Medical Specialist 2 for OB-GYN, and Dr. Donato Tuhano, 
Mahatma, medical officer three, as general practitioner to help serve the people of San Carlos. We are also pleased to report that construction of phase two of the new, of the new city hospital is now ongoing by a private contractor who was awarded the contract through public meeting last December. Phase two with a floor area of 1,356 square meters includes a pathologist area and lounge, x-ray room, operating room and delivery room wing, OB wards and adjacent hallway and dialysis waiting area at the cost of 22.4 million pesos. Our full implementation, our full implementation of child friendly programs in our city in health office City Hospital and City Social Welfare and Development Office made us deserving to the world most child friendly city in the province in, in the region in various years. This achievement notwithstanding, we have strengthened our commitment to the children with the launching of the Millennium Development Goal, family based actions for children and their environments in the staff or MDG phases. Last August 2012, for the poorest of the poor in the slums of San Juan Bay Bay in Barangay 6, with 60 beneficiaries representing 30 parents and guardians and 30 children who will receive various poverty alleviation projects that will motivate and capacitate them to improve their lives without so much financial aid from the government. We have an existing grant of 300,000 from the local government academies for this project, and the city has allocated 300,000 annually starting last year for its replication in other poverty stricken barangays in the city. We also launched the, 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 the Best Car Bata program in 2011 for children in conflict with the law. And we successfully placed 11 children into formal school at Bonifacio Elementary School, while four, age 17 years old, were placed under alternative learning system. We're in. An house instructor goes to the guidance center every day to conduct classes, while tutorial and skills training are also provided to these children at the center. We also implemented the program Mobile Education for Medicans, launched in June 2012, to eight known fa family medicans in the city, wherein the city government through CSWD provided food and daily sessions of workshop and values formation to divert them from begging and instead work their way towards learning handicrafts like arts and toys made out of local and recyclable materials which they can immediately sell at the public plaza. But our social services program are not just child friendly. These is also are family oriented, especially with the full implementation of the gender and development program, which gains significant progress with the creation of the Gallup Council that will take charge of the planning, implementation, and monitoring of development programs and projects for men, women, and children in the city based on the gender and development pool of the city. We also, we have also seen to it that all sectors of our society are covered by our social economic programs, and that include our indigenous cultural community the indigenous people, or IP, residing in our Afghan barangays. Last year, the Sakuriya Council added among its committee a new standing committee known as the Committee on Indigenous Cultural Community, or Indigenous People, chaired by Dr. Claude Lee Maspunyana, responsible for the formulation and implementation of policies, plans, and programs to recognize, protect, and promote the rights and well-being of the ICC, the IPs, and the recognition of the ancestral domains as well as their rights to their children. According to Benjamin Franklin, an investment is not a space the best interest. For 2012, this administration appropriated almost 20 million pesos for construction, rehabilitation, and repair of school buildings and facilities for our public elementary and secondary schools in support to education. This funding includes the six classroom at the planned three-story 36 classroom school building at Julio de Desma National High School 
and important at 4.9 million and the state of the art eight classroom two story school building at School of the Future budgeted at 9.8 million pesos. At present, at present, we have a partnership with Moon Group, Florentina, the Desma Foundation Incorporated for the construction of 16 classrooms in different Bangladesh Barangay, Barangay schools targeted by the city to be completed this year using Interlocking Congress Lab or ICEB, a new technology developed by JF Desma Foundation called San Carlos Environment Labs instead of the more expensive concrete hollow glass. Two classrooms are already completed at Kesho Elementary School and two classrooms at Binone Elementary School in Barangay Natama. Six are now ongoing construction at Sitio Arcutunoy in Barangay Prosperidad. This brought to a total of 18 additional classrooms completed, 34 classrooms rehabilitated, <coughs> two, class, two school buildings repaired, and nine restrooms constructed from 2010 to last year. For our unwavering support of education, your city mayor received from the Department of Education a plaque of recognition during its first recognition ceremony last September 2012 for local government executives that have made very significant contributions to the public. Another area in social services where we made great strides is housing. Notable of which are the creation of the local housing board and the San Carlos Integrated Housing Authority and the completion of the final draft of the local shelter plan of the city that outlines it to its 2012 to 2020 plans and programs to, pro to provide affordable housing facilities with the normal rights to informal settlers of the city. In addition, we have also organized the San Carlos Committee Against Squatting Syndicates and Professional Squatters in April last year. Right now, the Integrated Housing Authority is making an inventory of available lots under housing and home programs. In line with the new land use plan of the city, more areas outside of the inner city and some areas within the inner city have been allocated for housing zones or for redevelopment into in situ resettlement sites. The present trust is to capitalize on the titling of public lands generally located at the barangay centers, where the barangay's bigger population is concentrated as informal centers. Through the land memorial profiling implementation under the Regala project, this long-time dream of the landless families to own lands will be realized. Guadalupe and San Juan of Barangay Sipaway are the two initial pilot barangay sites of the project. In Guadalupe, we have developed a three-hectare lot donated by Elsa Farms into a socialized housing project in partnership with Galvan Kalina. Around 58 housing units were already built by Gawad Kalina Community Development Foundation Incorporated of the estimated 170 dwellings that can be accommodated. The city developed the area, complete with access road, drainage, water, and electrical facilities. The implementation of infrastructure improvement at the southern part of the city port required the dismantling of houses of about 800 families. In order to minimize social dislocation of the affected families, an area for on-site resettlement has been identified and delineated on the north elevation area for the families directly affected by the clearing for the opening of the boulevard and alleys 20 meter easement and clearing of structures enclosing the shoreline along Barakai 6. The purpose of the resettlement program is part of the comprehensive sustainable and cost-effective strategy to address the immediate and long-term needs of the existing residents within the demonstration site that will be affected by the in-situ upgrading project components like the alignment of the boulevard. The lack of space within the foreshore district makes it impossible to locate the needed community facilities within the upgraded area. To address this, an area is delineated within the reclamation area to put up the, the community facilities cluster of Barangay 6. For our programs and activities for informal centers, the city received the award, Best Practice Award, 
trial against professional partners and party syndicates during the housing fair 2012 at the Mall of America. <laughs> at Carmel City is the only city in the Visayas to receive the award that recognizes our outstanding achievements in coordinating the activities of professional partners and party syndicates through sound legislative action, pragmatic policies, innovative anti-spotty programs and projects, and effective implementation of the same, thus enhancing our capacity to address housing and urban development concerns. Ang mga programa o proyekto sa siyudad, magingong mas matubak sa kinahalan sa katawan tungod kay kami nag-ihimok o konsultasyon sa mga tao nga hamong kinservisyon. Bringing the government closer to the people by holding sessions of the Sagudi and Parmosol in the barangays is the way San Carlos City gets the public involved. Since we took office in 2010, our Sagudi and Parmosol has conducted nine regular sessions in barangay instead of this comfortable session hall. Did you namo mahinong kinintanan kung wala yung kasiguruhan ang atong panalapit? Kung kung dili maayong ang paggasto o pagdumala sa panalapit sa atong gobyerno. The City Treasurer's Office is at the forefront in the attainment of our financial targets for each year. And so far, our City has accomplished our targets during my administration due to its massive saturation drive conducted by said office for the proper and exact collection of business and other taxes, fees, and other charges. Hand in hand with the city assessor's office to enhance tax revenue assessment and collection system, or ETRAS, that synchronized data system, as well as the city assessor's fast tracking of records, prompt updating of real property data, and the generation of exact fair market value for real properties, a most efficient revenue generation through to effective tax collection was achieved. On top of this, the San Carlos City Finances is ably managed, monitored, and controlled by the City's Accounting and Internal Audit Services Office. As testaments to this, both the City Treasurer's Office and the City Assessor's Office were recipient of awards for evaluation made by the Bureau of Local Government Finance, Region 6 in coordination with the Regional Association of Treasurers and Assessors for Regatta 6 given last December in the new city, while the City Accounting and Internal Audit Services Office received an award from the Association of Government Accountants of the Philippines last October last year. The City Treasurer's Office received the award 2011 Most Outstanding City Treasury Office of the Region for attaining the highest performance evaluation rating of 95.68% among said city treasury office in the region. And San Carlos City Treasurer, attorney, Army Grace Bolivar, was awarded 2011 Most Efficient City Treasurer. <laughs> most Efficient City Treasurer in the region for the submission of quarterly reports and SRE, ESRE real property tax collection. The City Assessor's Office was also awarded in 2011 Outstanding City Assessment Office in the region. Based on the highest performance evaluation rating of 96.35%. The City Accounting and Internal Audit Services Office was awarded 2011 most outstanding accounting office for the region. Awarded by Lawrence and the Chief Justice. The most outstanding accounting office for its accuracy, timeliness, reliability, and compliance to accounting rules and regulations among all cities of the country. For current year 2013, we spent another value year on the best performances from our various departments and offices. Because our 2013 executive budget is a result of a meticulous deliberation with all concerned offices and departments and our stakeholders to 
make resource allocation and policy decisions more transparent, participative, and democratic. So as I can say that this budget distributes resources, the limited resources of the city to the different sectors of virus, for the virus programs, projects, and activities needed for an efficient and effective delivery of basic services. This budget translates in monetary terms our executive legislative agenda. It integrates the city's master development plan into our expenditure program and only those projects which have been ranked as top priority in the annual investment plan are considered. The city's local finance committee is projecting that total resources will mix 613.8 million per calendar year 2015. For so on to local budget memorandum number 66 dated July 2, 2012, internal revenue allotment is initially pegged at 451.8 million, which accounts for 73.6% of our revenues. Local sources is projected at 162 million, or 26.4% of the total resources. One of the revenue generating measures exerted is the enhanced tax collection through tax information and tax mapping campaign. Another measure used is the building of teams to validate permits and other documents in order to bolster collection. The total amount of provided from general fund and the operation of economic enterprises is found in the 2013 annual budget has not exceeded total estimated income. In the appropriation of such amount, allocation has been first made for the provision of the basic services and facilities enumerated in Section B of the Code before applying the same for other purposes. Full provision has been made to all statutory and contractual obligations. Mandatory and additional aids to compound barangays were also appropriated. There is also an appropriation to the Sikunian Kabataan Federation Fund to be expanded based on submitted program works. A lump sum amount of 29.7 million, which is equivalent to 5% of the estimated revenue from regular sources, inclusive of the special accounts, has been set aside as annual appropriation for local disaster risk management council fund. For unforeseen expenditures arising from occurrence of calamities of which 30% is allocated for the Quick Response Fund, a standby fund for relief and recovery programs to mobilize to normalize situations and living conditions of people stricken by disasters, calamities, epidemics, or complex emergencies. And the 70% is appropriated for disaster preparedness as well as post disaster activities. The total appropriation for personal services under the general fund has been set at 201.9 million, which is within the 45% salary limitation set by the court and its implementation DPN local budget circular number 75 dated July 12, 2002. Included in the personal services appropriation is the fourth and final plan's implementation of the salary standardization law 3 per LBC number 99, dated May 25, 2012, effective last July 1. The amount of 136.1 million has been set aside for MOOB, representing 27% of the budget. A 10% reserved for the allotment disease of the MOOB expenses for every office is also being observed. The total appropriation for the government projects has been set at 19.3 million pesos which is equivalent to 20% of the city's 2013 internal revenue allotment. The amount of 4.4 million is appropriated for federal premiums contribution for Medicare para Samasa, program in line with expanded coverage under Public Act No. 7875, otherwise known as the National Health Insurance Act. There is also an initial appropriation of 5 million intended for the hospitalization assistance program of the city's indigent. A total amount of 62.3 million is appropriated for gender and development related projects 
programs and activities in compliance with RA 7192, the Women in Development and National Nation Giving Act, and the Constitutional Commission of Gender Equality. The above stated amount is more than the required minimum 5% of the local income from regular sources. Our economic enterprises, namely City Water Works Department, Public Market and Southern House Department, and Public Transport Terminal Division, are operating very well. The creation of these economic enterprises is based on their, on their financial capability to support this operation while delivering quality goods and services to the general public. It is noted, however, that the City Hospital Department, another economic enterprise, is still subsidized by the general fund. Gusto na kong i-emphasize nila na sugar-sugar ang atong kumigil pa sa sugar wala gayon na utang o nagulam sa isang kung sa nabago isang pa sa katako sa kanastuhan sa atong mga programa kung atong mga kuwerta. So wala kami ni plano na mong break sa mga mong executive record. Sorry to be down. We shall continue to live within our means. All these statistics have been made visible to the public in our bulletin boards at the City Hall lobby, public bus and bar, public transport terminal, and in addition, the City purchased an LED outdoor display now operating at the public plaza as a means of public information regarding the activities and programs of the City Government. To complete to complement our existing media, our cable television program, Late Night City Hall, aired every Saturday at 7 p.m. via Parasa CTV and our quarterly newsletter, Thank You. The seal of excellence that marked our wireless services to the people of San Carlos City not only made us proud of ourselves, but has also fired our enthusiasm equal, if not surpass, what we, your city mayor, your city vice mayor, the S3 members, all the department heads, and employees of the city government have previously accomplished together as a team. Team San Carlos has a surefire and tested formula for success in governance. And that is political will, plus self reliance, plus innovativeness, plus people's participation and consultation, plus transparency makes what San Carlos is today. And San Carlos, and San Carlos City today is not only a multi-awarded local government unit in the province or the region, but is also the second most livable city in the world. In the two and a half, in the two and a half years of my term, we have received the following provincial, regional, national and international awards, which I'll present on the screen at my left. From the provincial awards, the Search for Excellence in Local Governance Award, the Excel Awards, not a whole of whom is the champion, best performing city. Next, during the Provincial Environment Week, Next, please. Next slide. Next slide. The twenty twelve Pasinubo Sapalma during the 19th Panahan San Negros Festival. Again, several awards. The Negros First Livestock Awards, 2012. Next is the Kalina Search for Most Outstanding Barangaytano. Barangay 
the third provincial Paralympics. Police Community Relations Month celebration. The Provincial Week celebration. We have the regional awards, excellence in local governments, Excel Awards. Again, several other awards. Next slide. The BJMP Best. Best City Jail in the Philippines. We also have other awards. And we have national awards. To uh, 2012 Best Practice Award, Drive Against Professional Awards. <laughs> they have award in your city mail for uh, support of public education. 2012, most outstanding accounting office. And 2011, outstanding agricultural extension worker for Maria Anita Tosa. Next. 2011, Presidential or the Good Buying Award, Group Category, Search for Outstanding Public Officials and Employees. Awarded in Matanya. Champion, the Liranda Elementary School, Barangay Kutkot, in 2011. <laughs> National Search for Sustainable and Eco Friendly Schools. Next. Best City Jail, BJ and Peace and Carlos. And we have some international awards. <laughs> that is the 2011 Internal Awards for Livable Communities, the Livable Awards in Song Paso in South Korea. And we have uh, international, international awards also for Ilirana Elementary School. <laughs> Awarded, awardee of ASEAN Eco Friendly Schools Award in 2012 in Malaysia. And they were again awarded the same school. Southeast Asian Minister of Education Organization, Japan Education for Sustainable Development. The warning this time was in, in Thailand. So the same school with two international awards. That is Ilinara and Ilinara. Mahoni, Panakaayo, Kumantana, Nagpalaka, sa atong lugar ng gobyerno. Anunay, Usaka, Team Song. Usaga Tinua, Usaga Mapa, ang Itaplan, kay Papanayon ang gradual na paglambo sa siyudad, parulong sa atunging itli na estado sa kinabuhi alang sa katawan. If we have achieved victories in our unity, surely we shall be able to reach our destination at year's end. These widely quoted words from someone unknown would very well describe the real essence of our group. Effort to assure the success of our governance. And, I quote, It is a fact that in the right formation, the lifting power of many wings can achieve twice the distance of any bird flying over.
Thank you very much for coming here today. And thank you very much for your continued support and cooperation in all our endeavors of the city government. It will be a pleasure serving you again in 2013 and beyond. Have a nice day. Fun on the time. Where's the motion for adjournment? Social Security.